डॉक्टर सर देशमुख सर यस या गुड मॉर्निंग सर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग हाउ आर यू फाइन सर फाइन यस वेरी हैप्पी टू जॉइन यू कैन ऑलरेडी जॉइन सर यू कैन सी ओह वंडरफुल प्रोफेसर विचल राव वेलकम टू दयानंद सागर यूनिवर्सिटी वंस अगेन थैंक यू सर इट इज ऑलवेज अ ग्रेट प्रिविलेज टू हैव यू विद अस सर थैंक यू सो मच यू आर you are known to all of us and uh, every time your lecture gets to be over we have interesting question answer session and then we look forward to the next talk <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> yes and this is a very exciting topic today yes uh, yes yes so uh, we have had uh, very very nice lectures in this series Mm -hmm. and uh, yours is the concluding uh, lecture in this series of lectures yeah very good yeah good look forward to that and, uh, hopefully the students will uh, enjoy oh i'm sure means <laughs> it's uh, um seminars get to be very exciting uh, because of uh, two main reasons and both are very favorable today one is the topic and the other is the speaker <laughs> so so i think uh, it's a very special privilege today and um, all, all of us uh, know a little bit about ramanujan's work very good uh, he is of course such a distinguished uh, mathematician magical as your title suggests but every time you hear anything about him or read anything about him you always run into something new we he, he seems to be like an yeah. infinite source of you know what he has contributed to mathematics thank you this is really amazing so we are very much looking forward to your talk so deepika will be hosting uh, today's session yes so it's almost getting to be time and i'll leave it for deepika to conduct the proceedings yes sir still we have one more minute sir to start yes yes the other mathematics faculty also would have joined i think i see dr mahalakshmi there and uh, i believe others also would have joined yes sir sir shall we start professor now yeah yes i am ready okay, okay. go ahead deepika thank you sir very good morning to everyone today we all are gathered virtually for national mathematics day 2020 day 4 organized by dayanand sagar university in association with karnataka state council for science and technology i take an opportunity on behalf of department of mathematics and dayanand sagar university to welcome professor r vital rao and i am pleased to introduce professor r vital rao a professor did his phd in mathematics from purdue university usa he was a faculty in the department of mathematics at the indian institute of science for more than 3 decades and served as a professor and chairman of the department professor also associated with the department of electronic systems engineering department of civil and hydraulic engineering department of computer science and automation engineering at iisc and also he is associated with iit madras professor has held visiting faculty positions at purdue university and loa state university usa and visiting scientist at the international center for theoretical physics at 
Trieste, Italy. Professor's area of expertise in analysis, linear algebra and its applications in mathematics. Professor always enjoys teaching mathematics, so he is the recipient of the Teaching Excellence Award at Indian Institute of Science. This is about a very short introduction to Professor Vital Rao. Once again, please join me in welcoming Professor Vital Rao. Sir, we are eagerly waiting for your talk on Ramanujan's Math Magics. Now I request you to take over the session. Sir, please. Uh, thank you very much for your nice introduction. I will first uh, try to get to my screen. Uh, I always have problem getting this done. Uh, hopefully I will succeed this time. So are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Good. Very good. So volume, screen, everything is okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, my thanks to the Dayanand Sagar University and the Karnataka State Council for Science and Technology uh, for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, I have specifically planned this talk uh, to be uh, at a very elementary level because uh, I thought a lot of students, undergraduate students would be attending uh, these lectures. So I will keep it as minimal as possible at a level. And uh, Ramanujan's life itself is a very exciting uh, life story to be read. And add that to this, uh, his phenomenal contributions in mathematics. Now to talk about that in one hour lecture, it's uh, practically a futile uh, exercise. So what I will do is I will just give you some glimpses here and there uh, about his life as well as his work. Okay. Uh, he is uh, considered as uh, the most naturally talented mathematician ever born in the history of mathematics and perhaps in the history of science itself. Uh, the famous uh, British mathematician Hardy, uh, with whom Ramanujan uh, had a big collaboration, I will mention a few things about Hardy a little later. He, uh, um, the, the famous mathematician by name Paul Erdish, he used to say that Hardy used to give a score for natural talent and uh, he used to give 25 out of 100 for himself. Uh, for another person, very close colleague of his little word, I will say a few words about him later, 30 to little word and to 80 to Hilbert. Hilbert is probably one of the, the greatest mathematicians of all times and who lived during the second half of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century. And Hardy gave 100 out of 100 to Ramanujan. So as, a, as natural talent, Ramanujan was par excellence. I mean, there's nothing that was compared to him. In the words of Hardy, Ramanujan was a man whose career seems full of paradoxes and contradictions. Uh, to go through that, uh, all that in an hour's lecture will be difficult. Uh, he defies almost all canons by which we are accustomed to judge one another and about whom all of us will probably agree in one, one judgment, namely that he was a very great mathematician. I will very briefly run through some aspects of his life. It is not, uh, I will not be doing uh, good justice for all that, but for lack of time, I will mention only a few things about his life. Uh, as of course you all uh, know, he was born on December 22nd, 1887. He was born in a place called near Kanjanur in Erode near Tamil Nadu. I think it's Kanjanur, uh, but it's Erode, Tamil Nadu. His father was Srinivas Iyengar and mother was Komalatamma. A very orthodox Iyengar family, not a very well-to-do family, it was a very poor family in Erode. Uh, his early education was pretty good, actually. He went to Kangayan Primary School in Kumbakonam. And at the age 10, he tops a discrete primary school and then gets a concession to study in the Kumbakonam Town High School. And at school, he reads two books, which probably were people in the colleges were reading. One was the famous book of trigonometry by Loni. And the other one, uh, perhaps a very innocuous book called Course Synopsis of Elementary Results in Mathematics. This book uh, had a great influence on many things that Ramanujan did, namely 
this book had only uh, statements of results and no proofs or anything like that. This is the style that more or less Ramanujan followed in entering uh, his mathematical results in his notebooks. Uh, we used to call it, uh, okay, um, he joins the Kumbakonam Town High School in 1898 and then he passes the matriculation examination with first class. There's no question about that. And he even wins a scholarship to study FA. FA in those days is something like today's PUC. It first arts. It's called first arts. Uh, in those days in the Madras province, uh, SSLC was 11 standards and then FA was two years and BA and BSc were two years and honors was three years. So he finished the 11 years SSLC. It was called sixth form in those days. And then he joins the intermediate or FA class in Kumbakonam College. Uh, and he fails. He fails the examiner. That's when problem starts in his life uh, because his mind goes towards mathematics. Everything else is secondary to him. He fails the annual examination and loses the scholarship. And uh, so the, we could not attend the examination because he did not have attendance. One of the great guys who never attended classes probably. Then he again attends the class in Pachepas College, Madras, and writes the examination again and again fails. Uh, so there, the uh, as far as his formal education is concerned, it's over there. He, it's on, uh, he's, you may call him as SSSC passed, FA failed. Okay, that's all his uh, formal qualification is. Uh, but between after the failure between these 1907 and 1911. Uh, was the period which probably was the super activity period for his mathematics. There were three stages of super activities of mathematics for Ramanujan. The first period was between 1907 and 1911. Then that is when he writes his famous notebooks. Then in 1909, in the middle of the super activity, he marries at the age of 22, a nine-year-old girl family arranges marriage at the, the girl Janaki Ammal was nine years old at that time. So he's now 22, failed in the FA, got married. So the pressure to get a job and start earning is uh, right on him. But he knew that he knew that his only credential is his mathematics. So he carries his um, uh, notebook all around. Uh, he first meets uh, uh, the collector of uh, Tirukovilur, a place uh, in Tamil Nadu. Uh, he was uh, Ramasam Ayer, he's a very famous name. He was the founder member of the analytical club, which later became the Indian Mathematical Society, who was first president. And Ramasam Ayer uh, looks at, talks to Ramanujan, and then thought probably a professional a mathematician should talk to him. So he sends him to Professor Seshu Ayer. Uh, but uh, Seshu Ayer, being a professor, he goes to the mathematics, realizes that uh, he has done something fantastic, but he doesn't know how to help him because he is professor and he doesn't have any control over finances. So he sends him to another collector, the district collector in Nellur, named Divan Bhadur Ramchandra Rao. And uh, this is what a brief uh, write-up, uh, brief uh, describe uh, what Ramchandra Rao recollected about him. He says, I asked, first of all, uh, uh, Ramanujan explains uh, the mathematics that he has done. Of course, Ramchandra didn't understand much of it, but he realized that this guy is something big. So he asked him, what do you want? And Ramanujan's reply was, just he give me some money so that I can live and I can do my research. And so Ramchandra supported him to the tune of 20 rupees per month. Now, remember, Ramchandra is a collector, is a district collector, They're very powerful in those days. He could have arranged something uh, from the government money, but he did not. These 20 rupees he gave from his personal money. And uh, he said that this is the Nellur and other, this is not the place for you. You should be in Madras, the, what is uh, the present day Chennai. It was known as Madras in those days. You should be in Madras where the university is there, where professional mathematicians are there with whom you can talk. So you go back to Madras, uh, you can collect the 20 rupees from my family who is living in Madras. So uh, on that basis, Ramanujan goes back to Madras. And of course, he was very unhappy that he was collecting money from uh, Ramchandra Rao. So he tries to find a job. 
I joined the Accountant General's office, worked for a while. Then with the help of one uh, Narayana, finally he gets his, the famous post in the Poor Trust in Madras. And it is there, luckily, he comes in contact with the chairman of Port Press, who was Francis Spring, an Englishman, who was a lifelong supporter of Ramanujan. He realizes the uh, value of Ramanujan's mathematics somehow, and uh, he supports him right through his life in all his uh, endeavors. Uh, on the advice of the well-wishers, uh, he then writes to the British mathematicians about his mathematical work. It wasn't a big success in the beginning, uh, first, he wrote to uh, two mathematicians, Baker and Hobson. They just returned his papers without comment. And then uh, he writes to MJM Hill at the University College London. MJM Hill took some pains, read his papers, and commented uh, lots of uh, gaps in your papers. Uh, you have a uh, taste of mathematics and stability, ability, but you lack background and foundation to be accepted by mathematicians. He gave some professional advice, but refused to take Ramanujan as a student. Then, finally, Ramanujan writes the famous historic letter to Professor Hardy uh, in Cambridge. He, he start, uh, so that the first letter is dated January 6, 1913. And uh, he, the letter goes like this. He starts, introduces himself, and some of the sentences from the uh, letter I quote, I have had no university education, it's very clear. I don't have any mathematics background. Yes, only I am gone Monday to the school course. And then he says, I have been employing the spare time to work on mathematics. And I have not trodden through the conventional course of the university, but I am striking out a new path for myself. I have made special investigations, and then he says, the results I get are termed by the local mathematicians as startling. I have been developing this to a remarkable extent, so much so that the local mathematicians are not able to understand me in my higher place. And then uh, here are some of the, he encloses the letter with uh, some hundreds of uh, results uh, uh, that he has found. I uh, here is a sample, is a sample in his own handwriting. Uh, these are some of the things that he had enclosed in the letter. This is page five. And here is another page. And I want to draw your attention. Probably this created, uh, he still talked about a lot. Uh, I want you to look at uh, this particular uh, thing here. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus etc. etc. is equal to minus one by 12. So here is the sum of all positive integers. And he says the answer is negative and it is a fraction. Now, this is something which uh, stuck hardy in a sense. Um, you see, if, if you have a formal training in complex analysis, no Riemann zeta function, etc., you may understand, try to under, you may understand what he is trying to say. But Ramanujan doesn't know complex analysis. Ramanujan didn't know Riemann zeta function. But somehow or the other, he seems to have an intuition uh, to say what this should be, what value should be assigned to this series. This uh, created a lot of uh, sensation. Even today, uh, people talk about uh, this particular uh, uh, series of Ramanujan. Uh, then he was a master of con continued fractions. A continued fraction is a fraction. Inside the fraction, there is a fraction. Inside the fraction, there is a fraction, and so on and so forth. In general, one of the standard formats is RQ equal to 1 by 1 plus, Q by 1 plus, Q squared by 1 plus, Q cubed by 1 plus, and so on and so on. It goes endlessly. And then Ramanujan uh, goes on to give some example. Suddenly it produces, uh, when I put Q equal to e to the minus 2 pi, in this uh, expression, if I put Q equal to e to the minus 2 pi, I will get the right hand side. This is amazing because suddenly from nowhere he produces the e and the pi, which are all big transcendental numbers, and suddenly says what the value should be. And there's one more, e to the minus pi. If we put q equal to e to the minus pi, and he goes on to claim that I can evaluate for q equal to e to the minus pi root 10 for any rational value of f. And Rd was stunned by this thing. 
so he took he the, the letter puzzled them the, the the papers of mathematics that was associated with it really puzzled him and bothered him went through it and finally all night evening and night he discussed this with little word his friend little word i a few words about hardy and little word uh, i perhaps i'm not mentioning here uh, in a lecture in 1947 uh, the danish mathematician harold bohr the brother of nobel laureate niels bohr said that he had heard colleagues of hardy and little would say nowadays there are only three great mathematicians english mathematicians one hardy two little would and three hardy and little would so which means that this hardy little would as individually and as a combination dominated english mathematics at that time so it it is to them that ramanujan's paper went and it is they who found this whole thing very perplexing and hardy wrote in 1937 when he saw this uh, continued tractions and other results of ramanujan he said they defeated me completely i had never seen anything like this in my life before a single look at them is enough to show they could only be written down by a genius by a mathematician of the highest class uh, they must be true because if they were not true no one would have had the imagination to invent them this has become a very famous quote in the ramanujan circles now to describe the excitement uh, the bit that drama the hardy and little would had when they went through uh, ramanujan's letter and his mathematics and found it so exciting that they were so very excited and this is described by the famous math- british mathematician philosopher logician bertrand russell in a letter to his lady girlfriend or lady friend he writes i found hardy and littlewood in a state of wild excitement because they believe they have discovered a second newton hardy has written to the indian office and hopes to get this man here at once yes and it did happen uh, 1914 uh, uh, ramanujan was invited and he went makes a trip to hardy he joins him in april 1914 what followed was perhaps one of the greatest and most productive collaborations in the history of mathematics perhaps in the history of science itself hardy and ramanujan wrote several ground breaking papers during this period the year 1914 to 18 was his second intense period of mathematical activity you may recall that i mentioned that 1907 to 1911 was the period where it was the first major period where he did wrote his notebooks and this 1914 to 18 is the second major period of his activity uh, ramanujan was elected a fellow of the royal society in 1918 there are some interesting stories about this i will not go through them and the citation read uh, this it, it probably he, he is the, uh, the second first uh, second mathematician uh, second indian second uh, man of indian origin who was elected a fellow of the royal society and the first scientist and mathematician elected as the fellow of the royal society the citation says research student in mathematics distinguished as a pure mathematician particularly for his investigations in elliptic functions and the theory of numbers then uh, ramanujan fall sick uh, in, uh, in by the last years of his stay in england and then returns to india in 1919 most of the time is more or less in bad health in that one year between 1919 and 1920 when he is in india and seriously ill practically in bed that happens to be his third intensive period of mathematical activity so 1907 to 19 1911 is the first period 14 to 18 is the second period 19 to 20 is the third intensive period Uh, on april 26 1920 ramanujan died in madras so last year it was exactly 100 years since ramanujan died and uh, there are several conferences uh, uh, held in uh, memory of ramanujan last year there was one in december organized by the ramanujan math society where very prominent uh, ramanujan scholars from all over the world participated and spoke Okay, borrowing from the words of a poet, John Milton, the British poet, uh, for Ramanujan is dead, he is prime, and he left no peers. Uh, this is from a poem of Lycidas from John Milton. I just read uh, 
replace lycidas with ramanujam it fits in perfectly ramanujam left no peers uh, hardy was deeply depressed when he heard the news uh, for my part he says it is difficult for me to say that what i wrote ramanujam his originality has been a constant source of suggestion to me ever since i knew him and his death is one of the worst blows i have ever felt but now i say to myself when i am depressed i find myself forced to listen to tiresome and pompous people well i have done something you could never have done i have collaborated with both little bit ramanujam and something like he could turn see was very proud of the fact that he could collaborate with such a great mathematician ramanujam uh, on equal terms he, he as a collaborator i am very proud of that uh, uh from uh, hardy wrote the obituary uh, in the, uh, the very known magazine nature two months after ramanujam that it appeared and hardy some of these uh, sentences i will quote here ramanujam he writes the first letter of uh, ramanujam which he sent me was certainly the most remarkable thing that i have ever received uh, the body of the letter consisted of the enunciations of 100 or more mathematical theorems some of the formulae were familiar and others seemed scarcely possible to believe they were like magic you just couldn't believe that somebody could come up with such formulae his insight in the formulae was quite amazing and altogether beyond anything i have met with any european mathematician this is the part of the obituary that hardy wrote uh, then ramanujan died here is a very interesting sentence in that obituary 20 years hence when the researches which is work has suggested have been completed it will probably seem a good deal more wonderful than it does today one must add here ram probably hardy expected that 20 within 20 years some of the conjectures ramanujan had made would be completely proved and people will realize how important it is uh it must be said that 100 years hence 100 years after his death still researches are going on on the what he was suggested and all about his uh, conjectures and it has now seems to be a lot more wonderful than it did at that time it, uh ramanujan even 100 years after his death continues to remain an enigma um uh, no matter how good a mathematician you are and how hard you try you are not able to understand the workings of ramanujan's mind we now understand his formulae but we don't know we still don't understand 100 years after his death how his, he got this formula how he came to think of his results on where what was the source of this incredible source of outpouring of his mathematics no wonder then Marquardt's a famous mathematician by name Marquardt called him a mathematical a magical genius so his, his mathematics is like magic and that is why i titled my lecture as ramanujan's mathematics so uh, cox explained what do you mean by math magical genius he says an ordinary genius is one when you see his work you are stunned in the beginning but then after you read it you say oh okay if i had been some thousands of times smarter than what i am and if i had more time uh, than what i am probably some day i would have also proved this but what is a magical genius a magical genius is one where i read i read i read 100 times i see it i understand it but i simply cannot figure out how we got it and that's what ramanujan was magical genius how we found his results in our brain not now this is a very short uh, re resume of his life if you want to read more i suggest two books uh, uh, most of you uh, uh, should read these books one is uh, probably the first biography that was written of ramanujan this is by the famous library scientist sr ranganathan uh, ramanujan the man and the mathematician i think it was first written in 1967 but it was republished several times and the last was around 2009 or 10 maybe available still in amazon or somewhere not a very expensive book the other one which is very famous which was written during the centenary of ramanujan in 
is by Robert Kenigal, a very, very famous book, The Man Who Knew Infinity, and the life of the genius Ramanujan. In fact, a movie was also taken on this, uh, the, title, the same title, The Man Who Knew Infinity. Uh, you can uh, see it on the website on YouTube as I given below. Uh, it's about one hour, 15 minutes movie. Very interesting movie uh, uh, based on the book of Robert Kennigal and the life of Tom Monison and comes up with some of the mathematics also. So with that, I will, uh, uh, that's a brief uh, introduction to his life. More in these three places, Ranganathan's book, Kennigal's book and Kennigal's the movie. Now, I'm going to look at a little bit more about his mathematics in the remaining time. Uh, the centenary of Ramanujan was celebrated in 1987. Uh, a year before that, a very uh, well-known Ramanujan scholar at the, in, in the United States by name Bruce Bird visited India and he went through the various uh, places associated with Ramanujan, like his birthplace and the colleges, the schools where he studied, Madras and other places. And when he went back, uh, he wrote an article titled as Pilgrimage. Uh, for him, the visit to these places was like a pilgrimage. And it appeared in the journal Mathematical Intelligence. And I think if you now go to Google and just simply type a pilgrimage, uh, you will find this article, free download, you can download it. In that, he wrote, uh, the, he concluded this article, uh, which is really very interesting. It stuck me and really, in a way, it hit you. Uh, he said, I found that Ramanujan's name is known throughout India and that he is regarded almost like a saint. But, that but is what hits you. Uh, his mathematics is largely unknown. With the anticipation of celebrating the centenary of Ramanujan in 1987, perhaps a greater awareness of Ramanujan's contributions to mathematics can be realized, not only in his native land, but throughout the world as well. And certainly uh, throughout the world, a lot of uh, awareness has come of Ramanujan's mathematics again. Uh, the 125th but centenary was celebrated with grand fanfare in 2012 with several conferences all over the world. And uh, it was during that period, uh, the then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh declared uh, Ramanujan's birthday as the National Mathematics Day. That was during the 125th birth anniversary of Ramanujan. And that's what, um, that, uh, that's what we are celebrating today, okay. Now, so therefore, uh, to uh, since uh, uh, Bert felt so badly about that Ramanujan's mathematics is largely unknown, I thought that I would give us one or two simple glimpses of Ramanujan's mathematics, uh, which at an elementary level, as, as elementary a level as possible, uh, so that some of your students can uh, understand and get excited and start reading more. So I'll make a few point initial remarks. Um, Ramanujan mentioned, studied several functions called arithmetical functions. These are very important in number theory. So what are arithmetical functions? An arithmetical function is a function A of n. That is, it is defined for the values when n takes positive integral values. So we have A of 1, A of 2, A of 3. The value of the function itself can be again an integer or it can be real or complex numbers. So we have a function of which is defined only for positive integral values, but the value of the function can be either positive integers, negative integers or real numbers or complex numbers. So A is a function from N to S. N is the positive integer. The value set S can be either Z, value set S can be positive integers or all integers or real numbers or complex numbers. So here are some examples. I'll give you one or two examples and rush through. I'll skip the other for lack of time. For example, you take a number N and look at its devices and call it DN. So this is one function. For a very positive integer N, look at D of N, 
the number of divisors. For example, if you take six, its divisors are one, two, three, six. And how many divisors are there? There are exactly four divisors. So D of six is equal to four. Similarly, 12 has six divisors, one, two, three, four, six, and 12. So therefore, D of 12 is six. And for any prime number, there are exactly two devices, namely one and P itself. So D of P is exactly two for all prime numbers. So this is one arithmetical function. For every positive integer n, D of n is defined. And the value of D of n is again a positive integer because it is a number of devices. So therefore, D is a function from n to n. It's a, uh, argument is also natural numbers, value is also natural numbers. And as we see, any number will have at least two factors, namely one and itself. Therefore, d of n is always greater than or equal to two. There are other, uh, you can also take instead of uh, the uh, devices, you take all the devices and take their kth powers. So, you take a number n, take all its devices, raise each one of them to the power k, and add them. So here that is written summation d divides n. So take all the divisors of n, take the kth power and add them. For example, the divisors are 1, 2, 3 or 6. Sigma 2, 6 means raise them to the power 2 and add them. If you want sigma 3, 12, take the divisors of 12, raise them to the power of 3. So in general, sigma kn is raised to the power of k. Sigma 1 is the sum of the divisors. Sigma 0 is defined to be the n. Because sigma 1 is simply a raising to the power of 1. So you are just adding the divisors. Similarly, there are other uh, functions which I will skip. Uh, because I think uh, I try to save time for other things. Okay. So now there are many arithmetical functions that one comes across in number theory. There are two Arith important arithmetical function that Ramanujan made some interesting contribution. They are called partition functions and the Ramanujan's tau function. Now, I will spend a lot of time on partition functions, yeah, majority of my time. I may even not talk about tau function because I may not have time, but let's see how it goes. So, what are partitions? So, this let's see closely. Suppose I have three coins of one rupee denomination. So I have three coins. Uh, I want to distribute them. How many ways I can distribute? It? So I have three coins. I have. I want to distribute them. How many ways I can do it? Now what do I mean by how many ways I can distribute it? And what do you mean by distribute it? So let's make some clarifications. All the coins are alike. You can't distinguish one coin from the other. You cannot break the coins. You have to give the whole coins. And the person, you can give all coins to the same person or you can distribute it in any way you like. The actual person to whom you give is not important. How you break, how you divide those three coins into various groups is important. So the order in which I distribute is not of concern. So for example, suppose I give two coins to person A and one coin to person B, that is the same as giving two coins to person B and one coin to person A because the person is irrelevant. What I have done is I have given two coins to one and one coin to the other. That's what matters. So, for example, let's take three. I can give all three coins to one person. I can give two coins to one person and a third to another person. Or I can give one coin each to three persons. So, there are three ways of distributing three coins. All three to one. 2 to 1 and 1 to the other or 1, 1, 1. So, thus there are three ways to partition the number 3. That's what we say. This is what we mean by saying partitioning the number 3. So, let's say this. we have the three coins. I give all three to one person. Then I have the three coins. I partition it. I give two coins to one person and one coin to another person. I'll write it as 2 plus 1. Then I have the three coins, I partition it, partition it. I make now one, three persons, I get therefore one plus one plus one. 
So I have the three partitions of the number three given by three, two plus one, one plus one plus one. So we say P of three is three. The number of partitions of three is three. So the question is, suppose I give you a general positive integer here, yeah? what is Pm? So let's say P2 is obviously 2. I can give all as 2 to 1 or 1 plus 1. So P2 is 2. Of course, P1 is obviously 1. There is only one coin, you give it to one person. So, so far we have seen P1 is 1, P2 is 2, P3 is 3. Now, if you want to make a guess for P4, I usually do this when I give a lecture in person and in schools and other places, and I expect answers from the audience. Now, I get, I, I just push, uh, since we are now virtually meeting, so I will give some of the answers I have got. So, one of the persons, one of the students answered it is 4, because P of 1 is 1, P of 2 is 2, P of 3 is 3, therefore P of 4 is 4. Another fellow said, P of 5 is 5. Okay. Now, why did this other fellow say 5? The, I asked, there are two fellows say, who say the answer is 5. One of the students said, the answer is 5 because it's 1. Then P2 is the prime number 2. P3 is the prime number 3. P4 must be the next prime number 5. Then this other student said, the answer is five, but his reasoning is wrong. He said, what is your reason? He said, P1 is one, P2 is two. When you want to come to P3, he said, you add these two. You add these two. Wait a minute. you get this 3. So therefore, if you want to get a P4, you must get 2, or you must add 2 and 3, then you will get 5. So that was his reason. If you are adding the previous 2, you should uh, get the correct answer. So the answers were P of 4, let's see. I have 4 coins. I can give all 4 to 1 or I can put a partition and make it 3 and 1 or I, I can move the partition and make it two and two, or put another partition in between and make it two, one, 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 or finally I can put a partition everywhere and then make it uh, one, one, one. Okay. So how many partitions we got? Five of them. So we have number of partitions of four is five. So P of four is five. So, so far, P1 is 1, P2 is 2, P3 is 3, P4 is 5. So, what should be P5? So, now the prime number reasoning is also working and adding reasoning is also working. So, according to the prime number fellow, the next P5 must be 7. But according to the fellow who says you add the previous two guys, the P5 must be 3 plus 5, 8. So, the two possible answers were P5 equal to 7 or P5 equal to 8. You add 3 and 5, I must get 8. So, which is correct? So, therefore, let's again check. 5, 4 plus 1, or 3 plus 2, or 3 plus 1 plus 1, or 2 plus 2 plus 1, or this, or this. So, how many we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, I get P5 equal to 7. So, the prime number fellow was right. That as so far. So the eight answer was wrong. So again, now let's go back consolidate. P1 is 1, P2 is 2, P3 is P4 is 5, P5 is 7. So what is the guess for P6 then? Obviously, therefore, our natural guess seems to be the prime numbers keep to be coming 2, 3, 5, 7. So the next prime number is 11. So P6 should be 11. Okay. Then suddenly somebody came up and said, sir, it should be 9. Another student came up and said, it should be 9. I said, why? He said, 2 is a very strange number. Then look at other things. 3, 5, because even when you talk about prime numbers, 
all prime numbers are odd, only these two fellow is an even prime number. Leave it alone. Other answers you see, 1, 3, 5, 7, all are odd numbers. So it should be the next odd number, 9. So again, let's go and check. I have the partitions of sick. I will write them all. Uh, you can uh, read this thing. I will, uh, we can quickly go through that. 5 plus 1, 4 plus 2, this, 3 plus 3, then 3 plus 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1 plus 1, 2, then 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, all 1s, and then all 1s. How many we got? We got 9 of them. Uh, P6 is 11 of them. So the prime number fellow was still getting correct answers. So P6 was 11. So our P1 is 1, P2 is 2, P3 is 3, P4 is 5, P5 is 7, P6 is 11. So what is P7? Of course, I sometimes teach uh, my friends in experimentalists. So you have got six points. So now you can draw the graph. P7 must be the next prime number 13. Uh, so is it correct? And it turns out P7, if I write all the uh, partitions one by one, you can see what I am, uh, if you can guess who I am writing these partitions in which order. That is very important also, uh, you can see. So these are all the partitions and the answer is 15. Prime number is gone. So the prime fellow is also failed. Now the pattern is gone. We simply got, we thought it was prime number, it's not there. We thought it was odd numbers, it is not there. We thought adding the previous two things, it is not there. So we seem to have lost all the pattern and it gets wider and wider and crazier and crazier when n becomes bigger and bigger. I'll give you some examples. P8 is 22. P9 is 30. P70 is approximately 4 million. P200 is approximately about 4,000 billion and P243 is about 1.3 million billion and it gets even wider is one phenomenal example P1 14,031 the number of partitions is not 92 it is followed by all this followed by all this followed by all this followed by all this, followed by all this. So it is approximately 9 into 10 to the power of 126. So it has 127 digits. Yes, uh, it would be humanly impossible to list all of them as I was doing for 5 or 6 or something. So things are getting wilder and wilder. So do you have any hope of getting a formula for PM? Several attempts by all the mathematicians of the day is that no result. Then comes Ramanujan. This is where the magic is. So Ramanujan, first I will say, I will, I will say why it is called Ram, Hardy Ramanujan. Ramanujan gave this formula. Uh, it's called Hardy Ramanujan formula. They say it is asymptotically this Pn, that is for very large values of n, P of n is approximately the right hand side. What it means is, if you take the ratio of Pn and the right hand side, as n becomes larger and larger, that ratio becomes 1. That means Pn uh, is essentially what is given by the Hardy Ramanujan formula. So, this is known as the Hardy Ramanujan asymptotics for uh, the partition. Observe here, we are dealing with whole numbers. n is a whole number, positive whole number. The number of ways we can partition is a positive whole number. We expect a formula in terms of whole number. But suddenly, here is Ramanujan bringing in the exponential, the pi, both are uh, highly transcendental numbers. And how we uh, really imagine such a thing, this, this is where uh, the magical genius comes. Nobody could have ever imagined such a formula. And today also we do not know how we could come up with the formula. This is an asymptotic formula. There is another thing that Ramanujan gave. Uh, again, it's called, we'll call it the, this is called the exact form. He says, approximately it is equal to this. This is even more horrible in the sense that here is a left hand side where n is a whole number. The P of n is a total partition that is a whole number. The right hand side involves pi, 
differentiation, which is uh, operation involved in the continuum, then the exponential, the pi, and uh, many other things, the square root of n minus 1 by 24, it has a significance, which I will not get into it. So this is an amazing uh, mess. How one could even ever have imagined such a formula? Then the question is, I have put uh, uh, Pn approximately. So that symbol stands for approximately. So if it is approximately, there must be an error. What is the error? Then Ramanujan, so the error is, the actual value is Pn. My approximate value is P1n. The error is the exact value minus the approximate value. P of n minus P1 of n. And then Ramanujan says, well, I will tell you what the error is. The error is approximately P to n. Then if the error is approximately P to n, there must be an error. What is that error? And he says, that error is approximately this. So if you take the second approximation, the error is Pn minus P1 n P2 n. He says that error is approximately P3 n. And then he says, okay, if that is approximately P3 n, there must be an error in that also. What is that error? He goes on and on and on like that. And then finally he says, I'll give you an infinite series. P1 n plus P2 n plus P3 n plus etc. So he says Pn is equal to P1n plus P2n plus P3n. Each one of them has the same express, similar expression as in P1n. It involves the 24th roots of unity, complex roots of unity, but uh, I will not get into that. So there's similar expressions. But unfortunately, the series diverges. The series that Ramanujan writes diverges. What is on the right hand side diverges adds up to plus infinity. Whereas the left hand side is a positive number. How can these two be equal? So there is a the series diverges. Then the explanation is I just wrote the series. Don't sum all the terms. How many terms you should sum? If you want to calculate the P of n, take root n terms. How can you take root n terms? If suppose I want P of 2000, I can't take root 2000 terms. What it means is, you take root n, root 2000 lies between 44 and 45, take 44 terms in that infinite series and sum, and you will get the value of P of n, and that works. Okay. And that's the magic of Ramana. All this, how did he guess? Nobody knows. Okay. Then, why call this Hardy and Ramanujan formula? If it is Ramanujan who gave all this. Well, the thing is, Ramanujan gave, uh, wrote down some formulae, but he didn't prove them. So it was Hardy who worked out the so-called uh, circle method along with Ramanujan. You know, this involves complex analysis about which Ramanujan had no idea. So it is even a mystery that how Ramanujan must have some other way of getting this formula. But it is the circle method which involves the complex analysis that gives this result. Uh, that is a uh, that is the reason why. It is called Hardy Ramanujan form. But a small twist in the story. Uh, as I said, the Hardy Ramanujan series gave the uh, divergent series whose first approximation, P1n, as I wrote to you, was this. It involved differentiation, it was exponentials, and things like that. Now, 20, 17 years after Ramanujan died, another mathematician by the name Radamakar gave a convergent series. Whereas Ramanujan had given a divergent series. And in his, the terms were like this. Just like Ramanujan, he had the first term like this. The basic difference is, if you compare, essentially Ramanujan had the, RD Ramanujan had the exponential e to the power of something. Radhamakar has hyperbolic sign. That is the only basic difference. And the series converges. Now, it, is, it turns out Ramanujan originally had only hyperbolic sign, but it is convenient to work out a proof with the exponential. That is why Hardy changed it to the exponential and uh, we, they ended up with the divergent series. Uh, a very uh, well-known mathematician, my name Zellberg, observes this, that in the summer of 1937, I had actually myself been trying 
uh, studying that number 36, that formula of Ramanujan. And I had arrived at the same formula as Radhamaka. It always seems strange to me that Hardy and Ramanujan did not end up with this formula. And I believe firmly that the responsibility for this rests with Hardy because it, it is believed that Hardy changed it from hyperbolic sign to exponential. But at the same time, Hardy's credit, it must be said that uh, they already mentioned Hardy and Littlewood were the two greatest mathematicians, leading mathematicians in England at that time. And uh, they had kind of put England on the world map again. And Hardy should get the credit for not throwing the letter he received from Ramanujan to waste paper basket, unlike some other mathematicians. And he also worked with him without destroying Ramanujan's confidence. He could have easily said, uh, oh my goodness, you know, because Ramanujan had no formal training, there are many formal things in mathematics he didn't know. Hardy could have usually sort of shouted at him and said, oh, you don't know even this. Now, how could I not this? My undergraduate students know this and some kind of insults like this, he could have heard at him. But whatever he could teach, he taught him gently and without destroying the genius in Ramanujan. And this is a lesson for all teachers and mentors who are sitting here. See, you have to be very careful when you deal with students. There is always some spark in that person. Don't destroy it. Okay, so now that was the first magic that I wanted to say. The partition formula, even if today, is a magical formula in the sense uh, we have not understood, no, even the, the, the best of the mathematicians have not understood how Ramanujan came up with such a formula. What, what led him to this formula? That's magic. Now, then he did something more with these partitions. So at the time of Ramanujan, uh, the partition functions have been calculated for P1, P2, P3, up to P200. Uh, there was one uh, defense fellow. So this, they had a table for the values of Pn. I have produced the table here uh, for n equal to 60. I have produced up to n equal to uh, 60. You see that here n equal to uh, 60. Mm. This is the last entry here. I have produced n and then pn and then again n and pn and so on. Uh, so I have gone all the way up to n is equal to 60. Of course, uh, what was available at that time was uh, up to n equal to, oh sorry, uh, up to n equal to uh, 60. So they had uh, formulas up to n equal to 60. Uh, I have given up to n equal to 60. They had formula, uh, the table available up to n equal to 200. So that's what Ramanujan had. So when we see this table, uh, we don't see much pattern in it. You can you can take the full table 200. It will be very nice before you see the rest of the lecture. You look and stare at the table, look at the table and see whether you find anything interesting in the table. But not much was found. But it was Amman who saw something very interesting in these values. Okay, so he said, I am going to remove some values from this table. Then you will see what the magic happened. He says, uh, take this table and then remove up to 4, keep 4. Then remove 5, 6, 7, 8, keep 9. Then keep 14, keep 19, keep 24, keep 29, keep 34, keep 39, keep 44, 49, 54, 59 and so on. What is he doing? He starts with 4 and he goes on adding 5. 4, 9, 14, 19, 24. He talks, takes those values of n and looks up the value of p of n, number of partitions for them. 4 has 5 partition, n equal to 9 has 30 partitions, n equal to 14 has 135 partitions and so on. Now what he observed now is that this p n values 5, the pn values are uh, pi, see, 5, 30, 135, 490, 
575, all these he says are divisible by 5. When you saw that, how he saw that in the mess of that table and came up with such a phenomenal observation is unbelievable. He says that now you remove all this, you look at 4, 9, 14, 19, 24, 19, 34, 39, 44, 49, etc. Next will be 64, next will be 69 and so on. And your answer PM will always be divisible by 5. It will be a multiple of 5. It will either end up with 5 or 0. The last digit will be either 5 or 0. So, what Ramanujan is looking at is at these numbers. 4, n equal to 4, 9, 14, 24. Now, these numbers are such that n minus 4 is divisible by 5. So, if you take... Uh, each one of these numbers subtract 4 and then it is 5. So the numbers that he is looking at are of the form 5k plus 4. When k equal to 0, you get 4. k equal to 1, you get 9. k equal to 2, you get 14, etc. So when n is of this form, he, he can also write this in technically at 4 mod 5. He says whenever you look at such numbers and look at the corresponding values of pn, which I already shown, then these pn's are all divisible by 5. So pn is equal to 0 mod 5. That's the technical way of writing it. So what does Ramanujan say? If n equal to 5k plus 4, written as n congruent to 4 mod 5, then pn is divisible by 5. That is pn is 0 mod 5. So that is his first congruence. Whenever you take numbers, which leave a remainder 4 when divided by 5 and you calculate the number of partitions of them, then that number of partitions will always be a multiple of 5. And this property you could see from the maze of those 200 numbers that he had. There, but then from those 200 numbers, he not only saw this maze and he says it would going to happen farther, no matter how large a number you take. You may take n to be 5 trillion plus 4 and still the number of partitions of n will be divisible by 5. It will be very difficult for you to calculate but he says I know it has to be divisible by 5. That is his first magical congruence. The next congruence he says is take these numbers again. Now I am going to remove other different things. See I have written now previously I written 4, 9, 14 etc. Now I am going to return 5, 12, 19, 26, 33, 40, etc. What I, what I do is I start with 5, I go on adding 7, 5, 12, 19, 26, etc. Now calculate the values of PM. What do I get? 7, 77, 490, etc. What do we observe? They are all divisible by 7. So what he gets? You take numbers of the form. 7 n minus 5 is divisible by 5, that is numbers of the form 7k plus 5, which can be written as 5 mod 7, and then look at the values of pn, they are all divisible by 7. So that is the second observation. You take numbers of this form, then the corresponding number of partitions is divisible by 7, that is pn is congruent to 0 mod 7. That is his second congruence. Previously, he looked at numbers of the form 5k plus 4. Now he looks at numbers of the form 7k plus 5. The third one is, again he says, I'm going to remove different things. Previously, I started with 4 and I went on removing, looking at 4, 9, 14. Then I looked at 5, 12, 19. Now I'm going to do different things. I'm going to look at 6, 7, 28, etc. So I start with 6, go on adding 11, and then I get these values of pn, and these values are divisible by 11. That is another observation he makes. So he looks at numbers of the form 11k plus 6, and looks at pn, and then say they are all divisible by 11. So that is his third concept. Now, let us summarize whatever he has done, something really even more magical he does. So let's sub, let us uh, digest what we have done so far. Okay. 
so we have looked at three congruences first we looked at numbers of the form 5k plus 4 congruence 1 and whenever looked at numbers of the form 5k plus 4 the corresponding the last column we look at pm that is divisible by 5 the second congruence says whenever you are looked at number 7k plus 5 the pn is divisible by 7 the third congruence says that whenever you look at number 11k plus 6 it is divisible the pn is divisible by 11 look at the divisibility the 5 let me this is a little tricky for me i am not used to this but i will try this see the interesting thing here is in the first congruence he has 5 here and the divisibility is by 5 in the second congruence he has 7 here and the divisibility is by 7 In the third congruence, he has eleven here, and the divisibility is by eleven. Now, how he could see all this in the base from that two hundred uh, table, and then say that it is going to happen for any number of this form is just, I think, a magic. That is one of the biggest magics. Then there will be even bigger magic that will come. Okay. So now, what he has done is there are in the let me uh, I'll write. I mean, I like to write. I And that's why i don't very much like these virtual lectures i uh, always like to write things on the board okay okay so now he looked at for in the first congruence he had numbers of the form 5k plus 4 so there is one ingredient in all in it that 5 which is a prime number okay the second one he had 7k plus 5 so there is a 7 and that there is a prime number involved in it okay and the third one is looked at 11k plus 6 and there is a prime number 11 involved in this as i pointed out the divisibility property is by the same prime number the divisibility property of pn is by the same divisible by 5 if it is 5 divisibility by 7 if it is 7 and divisibility by 11 if the prime you chose was 11 Now the question is, why did he choose only these prime numbers, five, seven, eleven? Why could he not have chosen other prime numbers? Like, uh, why not? Why did he not choose three? Why did he not say thirteen? Why did he not write congruence for prime number seventeen? Why he wrote only for five, seven, eleven? The second question is, remember, uh, again. He uh, let me again write. I will. Uh, this writing is the best part. <laughs> I love writing. Okay. Um, again, in the first congruence, he had five k plus four. See that four appears. The remainder five k plus four. Now, when you divide by five, you can get many remainder. You can get remainder zero or remainder one. Or remainder two, or remainder three, but he chooses remainder four. Similarly, in the second case, he looks at seven k plus five. That is, when you divide by seven, you can remainder, you can get remainder zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six. But he chooses by five. And then the next one, he looks at eleven k plus six. When you divide by eleven, you can get remainder zero, one, two, three, four, five, up to ten. But he chooses only six. Why does he do all that? What is why is this the specific thing he chooses? What motivates him to do that? We really do not know. Okay. The question, therefore, is why not other remainders? So we ask two questions: Why not other prime numbers? He chose prime numbers five, seven, eleven. Why not other prime numbers? And then we also other ask the other question. He chose specific remainders. Why not the other remainders? Why did he do that? Now the magic comes here. Ramanujan says it appears that there are no other such properties involving other remainders and other primes other than these three. Now this is something unbelievable. How he could say that? First of all, from a table of two hundred values. he simply predicts what is going to happen all the way up to infinity and he say picks up specific prime numbers 5 7 11 
and we he picks up specific reminders corresponding to them as five, four, five, and six. Now, then says nothing else. Don't waste your time. You are not going to get anything other than this. And that I think is amazing. How we could say that? How we even saw that? And that is why probably uh, Kanigal says he is the man who knew infinity. He knew exactly what is going to happen. Now, therefore, people started looking at was Ramanujan right? Are they going to be other primes? Are there going to be other reminders? Then, 72 years after Ramanujan died in 1992, these two guys showed, well, you asked two questions, namely, whether there are other primes and whether there are other reminders. They said, we do not know about whether there are other primes, but if there are other primes, the reminders have to be chosen such that 24 times that reminder minus 1 is divisible by the prime number you are working with. Very strange. And exactly Ramanujan chose. When you chase uh, P equal to 5, you have 24 times 5 is uh, uh, P equal to 5. Okay, let me go there here. Mm. Precisely how Ramanujan so When P equal to 5, 5 times 24 is 120. 120 minus 1 is 119. When you divide it by P, you get uh, uh, divisibility. Okay, so here is, uh, for example, in the first congruence, we have 24 R minus 1. It is not divisible. The remainder R equal to 1 doesn't work. The remainder R equal to 2 doesn't work. But the remainder 4, exactly 24 R is, 24, 4 is uh, 96. 96 minus 1 is 95. And it, that is divisible by 5. And that is why, you see, this is the remainder to be chosen. That is what uh, 72 years where they realize that whatever prime you choose, the remainder has to be chosen such that 24 R minus 1 is divisible to 5. So for the choice of the prime P equal to 5, Ramanujan had correctly chosen the remainder 4, which is divisible by 5. And how he knew that? That is magic. We don't know how he knew that. Okay. Similarly, when P equal to 7, there are several reminders and you will see that uh, Oh, let me see again. See, there are several reminders and you will see only when the remainder is 5, 24 R minus 1 is 119 and that is divisible by 7. No other remainder gives that 24 R minus 1 is divisible by 7 and exactly Ramanujan chose uh, that remainder. Uh, that's again amazing how he knew that, how to choose that. And he said nothing else will work also. That's amazing. Okay. And similarly in the third congruence, the right remainder is the 6 and he had chosen the 6. That is the only remainder for which 24 or minus 1 is divisible by P. Now, that's precisely what now. So, the remainder choice of Ramanujan was very correct, exact and proper was proved 72 years after his death, but he knew it 72 years earlier, much earlier than that. Okay, so next comes the other question. Okay, the remainder part is settled. What Ramanujan said is right, no other remainder is going to work. Then what about the prime? 83 years after his death, these two guys proved that the only prime numbers for which such congruence exists are 5 or 7 or 11, precisely those prime numbers which Ramanujan had chosen. In other words, if that from that looking at the table of 200 values of PN, Ramanujan saw all the congruences properties of the prime, uh, the partition function in an amazing manner and which was to be proved only 83 years after his death. And they used several techniques that were not available to Ramanujan. He didn't even know about them. They were all developed much after him. And so it is still a mystery as how Ramanujan would see these congruences. Okay. Um, okay. I'm supposed to finish at 12.30. Uh, so what I will do is, um, I have two choices. Okay. Now let me be very uh, simple. So let me continue with this itself.
Um, I will uh, next look at a very simple story that uh, we have seen some heavy mathematics if you can say so far. So let's come up to something uh, very uh, simple where we can all enjoy, uh, namely a small puzzle. Uh, the puzzle is not about these photographs here. Of course, probably everybody will uh, recognize uh, the person who is on the left, uh, on the right. Who is, everybody knows who this is. Who is this? It is Ramanuja. But who is this? And uh, think for a while. And it turns out uh, it is P.C. Mahalanobis, Prashanta Mahalanobis. Uh, the man who started the Indian Statistical Institute, Planning Commission, National Sample Surveys, a great advisor to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Okay. So he was the contemporary of uh, Ramanujan in the sense. He had visited him in Cambridge. And uh, so Nalanov narrated a story um, about uh, when we visited to Ramanujan in his room. Okay. So they, when he visited uh, Ramanujan, uh, he was uh, waiting in Ramanujan's room. Probably Ramanujan was cooking or something. So he had to wait. So he was going through a magazine on the table, just called the Strand Magazine. And uh, there was a puzzle in that magazine. And Palanobis uh, uh, could quickly figure out a solution. Uh, well, he could a little difficult to figure out a solution. So he wanted to check whether Ramanujan could find the solution. So he gives the solution. The, the puzzle is this. There are a row of houses numbered from 1 to n. Okay. There is a row of houses from 1 to n. You pick a house number D. Okay. So I'm going to pick a house number D. Okay. So all the houses to the left are 1, 2, 3, D minus 1. All the houses to the right are D plus 1, D plus 2, D by n. So now I have chosen this. So now what I do is I take all the houses to the left of the house I have chosen. Remember, I have chosen I have uh, chosen this house D. I have now looked at all the houses to the left of D and add the door numbers. Door number 1 plus door number 2 plus door number 2 plus door number D minus 1. And then similarly, I look at all the houses to the right and add all the door numbers. So, look at all the houses to the left and add the door numbers. Look at all the houses to the right and add the door numbers. Now, the puzzle is you must choose this D such that the left door numbers add up to the same thing as the right door numbers. So find n and d such that the num sum of the door numbers to the left is equal to the sum of the door numbers to the right. And he said, uh, since the, uh, the number of houses in the road is maybe small, the answer is easy. He said there are at least 50 houses in the road and at most 500 houses. So your answer for n must be somewhere between 50 and 500, and then you must find the corresponding D. For example, just for understanding the problem, if N is equal to D, 8, there are 8 houses, and I pick the house number 6, then the left in the houses add up to 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5, which is 15, and the right door numbers add up to 7 plus 8 plus 15. So we have n equal to 8, d equal to 6. It's a small solution for the problem if there are only 8 houses in the road, so less than 10 houses. We have l equal to r, so in this case, we have got the n and d. So when uh, Mahalanobis asked this question to Ramanujan, Ramanujan said, uh, uh, well, we do, we do not know, maybe the how even the road can be very large, it may have even the infinite number of uh, road houses. So I will give you all possible answers to write down. Malinobis was puzzled. Ramarajan says, take down the solution and he gives this answer. N, various values for N and D. And if you see the fourth answer there, 288, 204, that is the answer for the 
a puzzle if the number of houses were up to 500 above 50 and below 500 then n equal to 288 so the road must have 288 house then if we enter the 204th house the left houses will add up to the same number as the right houses this was uh, but says Ramadan said maybe the road is bigger then you choose the door number 1680 suppose there are 1681 houses then you pick 1189 and so on. These are all the only possible answers for the solution. Malnobis was stunned. He says, how did he get this? Ramadan's answer was again even more puzzling. He said, the moment you stayed at the puzzle, I knew that the answer comes from a continued fraction. And I'm, once I knew it was continued fraction, I knew exactly which continued fraction. Okay. He was a master of continued. I think uh, I will... Uh, Make a okay, couple of comments. A little simple analysis or it will work when you go home. Some students can look at this problem and analyze this. Okay. If you analyze this, you will see that the number of houses and the door number you enter must satisfy this equation. Then only the left equal to the right will work. Okay. Now, for simplicity, you write x equal to 2n plus 1, y equal to 2d. This equation becomes x squared minus 2y squared equal to 1. Okay. We want solutions for the above equations. And since all door number, the solutions must be integers. And again, we have x is equal to 2n plus 1. So x must be odd and y must be even. So set that x is an odd positive integer and y is an even positive integer. So we must solve the equation x squared minus 2y squared equal to 1 where x is an odd positive integer and y is an even positive integer. It turns out Brahmagupta, long before in the 7th century, had solved these problems, x squared minus 2y squared equal to plus or minus 1. And these methods were later generalized by Jayadeva and Bhaskara, Narayan Pandita and others. And this, the method they discovered was known as the Chakravala method. Later, Lagrange developed in the 17th century that is 10 centuries later after Brahmagupta, not knowing probably of Brahmagupta solution, he developed another method using continued fractions. Okay. Brahmagupta solutions were precisely uh, what uh, for X and Y uh, were uh, the following. Mm. Because he, he gives the solution for both uh, x, uh, the right hand side equal to plus or minus 1. The ones I marked with red are the ones that we need for our problem. Uh, it goes on. Okay. So the red ones give solutions for the our problem x squared minus 2y squared equal to 1. The black ones give the solution for x squared minus 2y squared to minus 1. For the solutions of our puzzle, we need the red ones since we want x to be odd and y to be even. Hence, the solution to the puzzles which uh, Brahmagupta obtained are precisely those which Ramanujan trailed out. Okay, so th that's the mastery of Ramanujan that he had against uh, in in the in the context of uh, continued fractions. Now, I would have loved to talk about uh, the Ramanujan uh, tau function, uh, but I think uh, I have only left with uh, 10 minutes uh, time. Uh, so what I will do is I will make some a few concluding remarks uh, and talk about something. Uh, yes. Um, we, be we began his journey with the first letter that he wrote to Ramanujan. Uh, to Harvey. Remember in 1913, he wrote his first letter to Harvey and then he went to England as a consequence of that letter and all. So we will end with the last letter that Ramanujan wrote to Harvey. Okay. So the last letter to Ramanujan, remember uh, Hardy, uh, Ramanujan returned to India in 1919 and in nine, between 1919 and 1920 he was very badly ill and during that period he produced a lot of mathematics. And two months before his uh, death, he died in April. So in January, uh, he wrote his last letter uh, to Hardy. And the letter goes like this. I am extremely sorry for not writing to you. I discovered very interesting functions. 
which I call as mock theta functions. They enter into mathematics as beautifully as the other theta, ordinary theta functions. I am sending with this letter some examples. This is this letter. And then this was followed by sheets of uh, examples and identities of uh, uh, these mock theta functions and other things. So the, uh, the, the Japanese born, Japanese origin American mathematician, Kenneth Ono, a very, very, very good Ramanujan scholar. Uh, it's very interesting how we got interested in Ramanujan's work itself. That's, that's another story, but I don't have time. But anyway, he writes, the mystery, mysterious letter set off a great adventure, the quest to realize the meaning behind these lost words and then to unearth the implications of the understanding. These words exposed in an unexplored territory of the world of mathematics a padlocked wooden gate beyond which was the promise of unknown mathematical treasures. Now, <coughs> the, the English mathematician, G. N. Watson, he was the president of the uh, Royal Society and he gave an address to the London Mathematical, uh, he was president of the London Mathematical Society and on his retirement as a president, he gave his pres uh, valedictory address as a president to the London Mathematical Society. The tradition in those days was the valedictory address of the president would be he would give uh, the work that he has done during his three year term or something as a president. But Watson did not do that. He gave a, a talk and uh, his talk was not about his work, it was about Ramanujan's last letter. Okay. I will come back to this if, uh, in a little shortly. Now, what is the content of this Ramanujan's last letter? It had four type pages, formulas for about 17 power series and the asymptotic behavior, no proofs, just a sample. He writes this equal to that. He has a big infinite series on the left hand side, and then he expands it in powers of Q. And he calls the coefficients of the power of q to the n as a n. And then he writes, it must be of this form for the various coefficients he gives. And this in general for very large n, a n suddenly writes is asymptotically equal. Just remember he gave the asymptotic formula for the partition function. So he sees what is happening for off for very large values, the man who knew infinity. He said a n is asymptotically equal to this big expression. And the mysteries were the identities. Nobody understood what these identities were all about, how they came from, and what are these asymptotics, how we got them. Absolutely no cue. Nobody understood that. And, and over and above that, he added that remark, these things come naturally and beautifully. They don't even know what it is all about. And he said that they just enter into mathematics uh, so beautifully. And that is, he has seen uh, unbelievable things, um, which took uh, several hundreds of years for us to understand. And it is rather poetically, Kenneth Reno writes about this. The cryptic letter written by a dying genius, the clues which inspired scores of mathematicians to embark on an adventure which resembles an Indiana Jones movie. It is reminiscent of the quest for the Holy Grail in which skillful knights confront great obstacles. But these knights are mathematicians and the Grail is replayed by a mathematical Rosetta Stone that promises to reveal hidden truths in new worlds. There's an article in the American Mathematity written 10 years ago. And as, as far as to, uh, again, the presidential address of Watson, he says it is not unnatural that one's mode of approach to the preparation of his valedictory address should have taken the form of an investigation into the procedure of his similarly situated predecessors. I was, however, deterred from this course. Ramanujan's last letter is the subject I have chosen. I doubt whether a more suitable title could be found for it than the title had used by John Watson in the Sherlock Holmes, The Final Problem. The, and Watson's title for the lecture was The Final Problem, an account of the mock theta function. That is about Ramanujan's last letter. The Ramanujan's discovery, he goes on to say, 
Ramanujan's discovery of the mod theta function makes it obvious that his skill and ingenuity did not desert him at the oncoming of his untimely death. Recall that all this letter was written during when he was almost dying, two months before his death. And he produced something in that letter which people took 100 years to understand. As much as any of his earlier work, the mock theta functions are an achievement sufficient to cause his name to be held in lasting remembrance. To his students, such discoveries will be a source of delight and wonder until the time shall come when we too shall make our journey in that garden of Kossafe, where pale beyond porch and bottle, crowned with calm leaves she stands, who gathers all things mortal. This is a poem uh, which he quotes. Now, the question is, there was always uh, this question that raised about how did Ramanujan pull these things so magically? And uh, Ramanujan, there's uh, lots of stories that he got uh, these things uh, from in his dream, Namagiri Abhimal, the temple of Anamakal, that uh, goddess came in his dream and gave him all these results, and so on and so forth. There's much debate about this and all these things. Now, whether goddess came and gave it to him or not, there is certainly something divine about all his results. And uh, as uh, one can only imagine, there is something divine about the whole thing that he does. And I quote a poem which I learned from my former director, uh, Professor Ramaseshan, uh, when I was talking to him about Ramanujan during the centenary. He gave me this poem. It's by uh, the title Prophet by Khalil Gibran. As in yonder valley, the myrtle brings his fragrance into space through the hands of such as these God speaks. Now, some or the other, these geniuses like Ramanujan are messengers of God. We have missed such so many beautiful things. We are missing to see once, once in a blue moon. He sends a genius and shows these beautiful things that exist. Ramanujan was sent to see the beautiful things that exist in uh, mathematics. And from behind their ears, he smiles upon this earth. Now, it is not uh, unusual that many claim uh, that uh, something divine happens. I remember, I mean, having read once uh, something written by Gauss, he writes that about when he proved some result, he says, finally, two days ago, I succeeded not on account of my hard efforts, but by the grace of the Lord, like a sudden flash of lightning, the riddle was solved. So there is something divine, something magical, whatever you want to call about uh, such geniuses. So Ramanujan was the one, of, one of, if not the greatest, one of the greatest such magical geniuses in the history of science. I will finally conclude with a quote with, of uh, Professor George Andrews, uh, a very, very well-known Ramanujan scholar who discovered this, the so-called lost notebook of Ramanujan. He writes, one of the most amazing and wonderful mathematicians of all times is Ramanujan. He provides a shining example for each of us in at least two important ways. The first, his magical genius has provided mathematicians for the last 100 years with wonderful research directions that have greatly enriched our understanding of many areas of mathematics. Second, he has shown us that someone born in poverty can achieve success beyond our wildest dreams. The world is a better place because he lived. And we are living in this better world because of Ramanujan. Thank you very much for your patient listening. I hope uh, you will look into Kanigal's book, look at his movie, look at the collected papers of Ramanujan. And one day, yeah, at least one Ramanujan will emerge out of the people who are listening this talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we are glad to hear uh, it was marvelous talk. We have given such a uh, wonderful historical fact about uh, Ramanujan. And I, as you mentioned in the talk, uh, no matter how good a mathematician you are and how hard you try, exactly we are not able to understand the working of uh, Ramanujan's mind. So it was absolutely correct, sir. Thank you for enlightening the students uh, with your wonderful talk, sir. Thank you.
i request uh, professor adeshmukh sir uh, to share your views i think you have some questions also uh, yes. yes actually i posted these questions in the chat box so maybe deepika you want to read out those questions yes sure sir sure yeah well, there are lots of thank you sir yeah <laughs> Just a minute, sir. Yes. Yeah. Like, actually, oh, yeah. my 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 first question was about this uh, continued uh, fractions. Yes, sir. Uh, so did uh, did Ramanujan run into fractals and um, this golden ratio at any point? Yes. Uh, if you remember, the, I wrote the continued fraction generally R of Q. Yes. If you put Q equal to one. Right. R of one is connected with the golden ratio. It is one over the golden ratio. Oh, that's very interesting because uh, I have never seen a reference to Ramanujan in the context of the golden ratio, which is, yeah, I think, very one. important. Yeah. This is really amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, my second uh, question, question, yeah, the second question was uh, with reference to the uh, partition number. This Hardy Ramanujan uh, formula. And it is, uh, as you even mentioned, it is uh, very strange that uh, he recognized that uh, pi should appear there, E should appear there. And I'm wondering if uh, Hardy's uh, circle, circle method has anything to do with the appearance of pi. And the second part of the question was. Uh, that would still not explain why E appears, thanks for the Euler. No, I see the uh, one thing is uh, uh, there is not much of a difference between the hyperbolic sign and the exponential. The, the hyperbolic mm -hmm. sign can be written in terms of the exponential. Yes. So the exponential, exponential. Okay. Minus. The All exponential right. minus thing was not part of uh, contributing much, so RT neglected that and looked at estimating only the exponential, the positive part in the hyperbolic sign definition. And it is easier to do estimates with exponentials. That, that is the reason why he brought in the exponential. Ramanujan had the hyperbolic sign. And okay. so he wrote the hyperbolic sign in terms of the exponentials. And it involves one positive exponential and one negative exponential. For large values of n, the negative exponential doesn't contribute anything much. So he looked uh -huh. at only the positive exponential. Oh, OK. Yeah. This is amazing how these minds work. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very fascinating talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. M. K. Banga, uh, Dean uh, Research, uh, DSU, is here. So, I, sir, I request you to address a uh, word of thanks. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Deepika. Uh, sir, uh, Vitar Rao, sir. Yes, sir. It was an amazing uh, talk, sir. Uh, thank In you. Fact, we could know uh, the likeness of you know, uh, Mr. Ramanujan. And uh, further, the wonder, wonderful work he has carried out. In fact, the partition of the number, whatever you have talked about, so very clearly have brought out uh, whatever Ramanujan, uh, Ramanujan has said. In fact, I am coming from computer engineering. We use the partition techniques in the left, right, and center. Very good. Yes. Whether it is a partition of the hard disk or a partition of the data for whatever work we do. And the nice properties that you have. Uh, explain to us he is simply great sir in fact now i feel like going back to uh, these you know, techniques that you have said and whether we can implement them uh, in the partitioning of whatever that we take up that's a great sir in fact the properties that you have brought out are amazing we can't just say we do a lot of observation but the type of observation uh, mr ramanujan has done simply great and you have very clearly uh, explained to us and uh, at no point in time, probably, I could uh, move out of the screen. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for thank you. excellent presentation. And then uh, the door number magic, uh, the door number puzzle has really puzzled us. And uh, uh, I think there are uh, many more such you know, say, uh, <coughs> mathematical findings by Ramanujan, uh, which you know, we are not aware. I think you now uh, we should listen to you for such you know, say, uh, you know, talks. So that we will understand uh, how the mind of a great Ramanujan has worked or was working. Yeah. Now, uh, your uh, 
last must say uh, wish that uh, one among the audience especially the students you know uh, becomes like the ramanujan uh, that was a great wish that all of us wish that one of our students become ramanujan like na say personality and yes. use mathematics uh, in application areas yes i remember how uh, aks uh, primary test algorithm uh, by professor manindar agarwal and yes. two btech students they solved uh, i think three century old no say uh, mathematical conjecture both of them were both the students were the olympia math olympia yes sir yes sir yeah <laughs> and uh, that aks algorithm made them no say uh, world no famous yeah. overnight i think you know we have lot of no say genius mathemat mathematicians and uh, some students be can become you no know, one such you know mathematician and uh, solve the problem uh, of a computer science or any other domain and uh, using mathematics and you know get laurels and say uh, you know by uh, doing such work so with this i, I also got no say responsibility to uh, thank professor uh, uh, deshmukh uh, for uh, helping us uh, uh, his team in uh, 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 you know arranging uh, this talk in fact sir vitaal uh, sir this is the fourth session that we have uh, had first one was by professor ratish uh, kumar from uh, uh, iit uh, kanpur he dealt with a lot of you know, applications in fact no in one and a half to two hour session he has brought in lot of you know, say modeling uh, from different you know, areas uh, it was amazing as yes. and then I, uh, it was by the second session was by dr rajshekar from iit karakpur my iit i am from iit karakpur and he brought out a very clearly mathematical modeling uh, in the growth of you no know, tumor it is a, a landmark no say work of course he has explained that you know, very clearly to all of us third one was by uh, my you know chinas bogle dr na chinas bogle um mathematics and mathematical modeling in the sports there was so i think you were <laughs> i must say i am sure everybody has uh, uh, you know <clears throat> taken us a lot of pleasure in uh, hearing from him as to how to model the uh, in modeling can be used in uh, say sports and also how nrds can be you know say uh, drawn from uh, such you know say modeling and uh, the fourth one is uh, to cap it all it is the greatness uh, session sir we had Uh, in fact i thank you uh, for this session sir and uh, from thank the, you on behalf of dsu as well as kcst in fact kcst is the one uh, which helped us in uh, uh, the celebrations of uh, uh, national mathematics day 2020 uh, this is the beginning in fact now we have got an mov with the kcst for all these type of activities and they sponsored us so let me uh, thank you say uh, from dsu uh, side kcst as well so uh thanks everybody uh and to making uh, for having made uh, this you no know, uh, lecture series uh, as part of our uh, uh, nmd 2020 celebrations a great success in fact yes. sir we have also got few more activities which you know uh, our mass department is planning uh, we would uh, request you to be Uh, one of the panelists are in that no sir those no activities we will request you sir with this what is this one sir uh, what, in what, what panel sir which panel no sir in fact we have got some you know, uh, quizzes and you know, some abstract okay. presentation by the research scholars and uh, pg students this you know, i think it is there in the uh, one of the uh, document that has been prepared by dr mahalakshmi Uh, we will send you sir so that you, know, uh, you can also be helping us in arranging those things or as the panel member to evaluate so a lot of interesting activities have been planned by dr malakshmi and team uh, yes it will happen in fact we want to have one month long uh, celebration right from uh, the uh, nmd 2020 it was actually supposed to be on uh, 22nd of december Uh, but one day is not sufficient furthermore uh, our students were writing examinations so we don't want to disturb them <laughs> that's why uh, the celebration started a bit late however it went as a really you know great as such i should say with this let me thank you sir again and thank all the organizers and the audience thanks sir thank you Thank you, sir. In order to Banga sir's words, I want to convey my uh, gratitude to you. This is Mahalakshmi, sir. Yes. As correctly said by 
Pratishu sir. Uh, we always left with those books out of excitement at the end of your talk. Uh, thank you very much for that, sir. And uh, I, this is uh, uh, with lot of gratitude. I want to take same lines from Kambara Mainam as you said, uh, as you quoted in the last thing that tol contain, tole contain. Uh, we uh, we can see you as a teacher, as a celebrity, as a scientist, as an expert, and uh, so on. And uh, every time when we are calling, you are very much helpful, and we are very much ready. Out of your uh, uh, time constraints and all, you are very much helpful for us. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for that. And uh, when I was discussed with our dean, sir, Dr. A. Shrinivas, regarding the connection with this NMD celebration. he immediately said we have to tell our students uh, to attend vital rao sir at least they have to see him and get motivated uh, towards this uh, commitment uh, of uh, all those things uh, thank you very much sir thank you very much we are very fortunate to have you here here uh, be with us sir thank you very thank much you. Sir. thank you thank you Once again thank you sir thank you so much yeah, thank you thank you bye thanks